Okay, level three, um, pend regular pendulum experiment was given to you. A lot of kids decided not to use the given equation that had a t and a square root of l. Instead, a lot of kids decided to track this equation, which can be easily made from the given formula, which had a square root of l. Basically, you square everything, you end up with t squared and l by itself. Now, what that translates to is we're going to have t squared on the vertical axis and l on the horizontal axis. And when we finally get to our line of best fit, this formula here can be used to compare with our gradient. So, here we go, from scratch. Here's the original data that the other video has. You might want to look at that. It's the square root of l. But here we're going to basically just insert a column. We're going to work out the average t. And that's going to be in seconds. We do not need to find the average of these three numbers. We can just go straight to the average, average, and divide by 10, because these are for 10 circles. That's our average t. Now, we drop that down, and those two, again, would not make a straight line on our graph. If we graphed l and t, we'd get a curve. What we want is, in this video, what we want is t squared. So, most people would also insert another column and have your t squared. And that's going to have the units of s seconds squared. So, equals that number to the power of 2. Now, this is the classic Excel, trying to put way too many decimal places on a number. So you right click, format cells, change the number to s number, not currency, to something much more logical like 3. There we go. Drop it down, and those are the two things we want to graph. Remember, Excel will always put the first column on the horizontal and the second column on the vertical. So you select you insert scatter graph and there we are here we go now we delete that little thing we don't want it you get this thing as big as you can because you will need to be able to play with it you turn on the grid lines there's your one of them and here is the other you will probably want to trim your axis because most of you are aiming straight for merit so here we don't need anything let's say below 0.1 we can trim it more later but you do have to grab that format axis fixed to 0.1 close and we probably don't need anything below 0.5 on this one so we can format that axis and anything below 0.5 we can get rid of Okay, so we've zoomed in. Now, titles. Titles of your horizontal below the axis. This, remember, is the length this time. That's L, and it's in meters. Then we want the vertical axis, get it rotated. This time we have period squared. And that's in seconds squared to get the right units on these things. Then you put the title above the chart. This time we have period squared versus length of pendulum. Okay? Now, insert your line of best fit. Line of best fit, line of best fit. That's your trend line. And you want linear. You turn on your equation line. There it is there. Drag your equation up to the top. You can make your title like that, and then drag your title sideways. Go to your home button. There it is there. Increase the font size so that you can read the thing. Change y to what you have on the vertical axis. On this graph, we have t squared on the vertical axis. On the horizontal axis, we have l. So, that's your achievement graph. We need error bar how do we do merit error bars? Now remember each length, the kids that I took this data from, reckon the length was good to the nearest centimeter. So what that means, I'll put it down here, are horizontal error bars. Basically they're all gonna be 0 0.01. Now it might
might be just easier to get one, two, three, four, five, six of these. So one, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. Looks a little silly, but they're all going to go back and forth the same because we haven't changed L. Now, the hard one changing t squared error bars. So here we go. What, what these are, let me get this graph out of the way. What these are is we made this an average, then we cut it by 10 to get this number, then we squared it to get this number. So our uncertainty, let me get this out of the way. I'll put the equation here for our vertical error bars on t squared. What it's going to look like, here's the logic before we put it into Excel. We want to find the maximum of the three numbers. We want to subtract the minimum of the three numbers. We need to divide that by two. That is always what we do with an average. Now in this case, we also need to divide by ten because they're for ten swings. All of that, strangely enough, gets to go on top of your average t. Okay, that would make it a percentage. We want to take the same percentage, so we're going to then multiply by t squared. Oops, capital T squared. And that will take the same percentage of the uncertainty on t from t squared. And then we have to do the power rule. With uncertainties, you always multiply by the power involved. Now, power of 2 is involved when you square something, so then you have to multiply by 2. It looks insane if you do it all in one step. Some kids do it in a few steps. They find the uncertainty of the average, maybe then they find the uncertainty on each average t, and then maybe they find the uncertainty on the t squared. So you need to eventually track the uncertainty for the things you're graphing. Here we graphed the period squared. In Excel, it looks like this. So we gotta be able to see what we're looking at up here. So here we go. Regular bracket, max. Regular bracket, select the three numbers. Close bracket, minus, min, bracket, select the three numbers. Close bracket. Close all those brackets again. Divide by 2. Divide by 10. Divide by your average t. That's right here in column C. Then you multiply, that's a star, by your t squared. That's right here in column B. And finally, you multiply it by 2. There it is. Lots of decimal places. Drag and drop. You can trim, format axis, trim the numbers down to, let's say, three decimal places. Okay, so that's the hard part for merit. Make sure you have notes on how to get uncertainties, no matter which variable you're changing. If you're finding square root of L, you'd need to know how to do that. If you're finding t squared, this is how to do it here. So, we can see our data that we want to make our error bars. You go to layout, you go to error bars, you pick one and you're going to change them. If you don't like those, you want the ones on the side. So, horizontal, there they are. Right click, format error bars. Customize, specify value. Click on that little thing, you want those on your horizontals. Left, on the other little thing, you want those on your horizontals to the right and you hit OK, and you hit Close, and now they're all the same, but they're what we want, 0 0.01. Vertical error bars, Format, Customize, Specify, that one. Click on that little thing, there we go. Select the ones we just calculated, that, and then next one. Select the ones we just calculated, up and down, hit OK, hit Close. There we go. Those vertical error bars, some of them are so tiny you can't even see them. Now you can notice, though, that we can trim even our upper axis from 2.1. We do not need anything from 2.1. We could chop up a little bit here. First, let's do this. Format axis. Fixed. 2.1. While we're here, we can actually trim our numbers, and we can just give it one decimal place. Close. Okay, so we have all this. These here, let's see, do we want to do any more trimming? No, that's probably good enough. Okay, so if we make this nice and big and we go into the print options. So here we go into printing our merit level graph. It looks like this. We have our 
line best fit equation with our gradient of 5.3284, lots of decimal places you can round that off. We have these error bars, the horizontals are nice and fat so we can actually draw our error line. Remember your error line you must draw on your graph has to go through about half of your error bars and it must cross your line of best fit so that when you find the gradient of your error line you can then subtract from your 5.3 and then say how good the 5.3 is. It gives it an uncertainty on the gradient. Now we also can think back to this that a lot of kids decided to do t squared instead of the square root of l and that means the gradient on our graph is now 4 pi squared on top of g a theoretical gradient I should say if you calculate that then you can compare to your 5.3 that's your merit level conclusion again check all your notes for other information